Shane Rooney here, also known as the Peaky Blogger. I'm joined by my co-host, Dean Hegarty. As well as that, we have a very exciting guest coming in, uh, James Fenton, who is a Bloodstock agent there for Willie Mullen, sources a few mares for him and also runs the Tlesutton, Blue Bloods and uh, Lions Mount Racing Club. James, welcome on board. It's great to have you. Thanks very much, lads. Thank you. Um, James, I suppose to start it off, really, we may as well just crack on and just I suppose get your get your insight into into racing and how it came about like what's the you, you have a good family experience in the in the thoroughbred industry yeah I do I suppose um happened three generations ago for the Fenton family <clears throat> and uh it's been continuing ever since um started with my great-grandfather and then uh my my grand uncle would be the best best way to describe it. it. It kind of went around that way into my grand uncle Clement, and he brought it on then into uh, what you call it. My dad, uh, my uncle would be the main uh, bloodstock man, and my other uncle Noel. So I suppose I got a bad fright off a pony when I was only eight years of age, and I kind of got a, I kind of came away from it, and. Uh, Pony called Nutty. Uh, he lived up to his name. He was a nutter. And uh, he would belong to my aunt Gemma. And uh, I kind of got a bit of a fright from but I, I was asked one time then to go milking cows for David to give him a hand because he was gone so busy with the horses. I'm sure one thing led to another. And before I knew it, I was riding in pint to pints. And um, just, I suppose, it's like what everyone says to you about horses, like they're a drug. Uh, and uh, I took a taste of it and I got addicted. Yeah, well, like, that's that's definitely it. Like, and just um, going, on to the, go, going on to the point as well, like your, your brother Shane does a bit of pre-training there for, for Willie and a few other yards as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, Shane is, is actually my first cousin, actually. Oh, he's a first cousin, okay. He, everyone thinks he's my brother, and uh, <laughs> Shane, I suppose, he's D Sh David's uh, son, and uh, he's learning the, the trade off David. Um, David is a, not being biased, he, he, he's what I call a very uh, professional man when it comes to, our, our, you know, either preparing horses for the sales uh, or preparing horses to have them right for going into the likes of uh, the extremes that they go to when they go to Willie's. Um, so Shane is learning from him whether he'll learn everything. Um, I don't think he will because what David Finton knows when it comes to horses is just, I don't think anyone would, would, would be able to take it all in, but Shane is very, very good in what he does. He's got a great set of hands, especially for young horses, uh, for breaking them and getting them going. And he's just very gentle with him. And uh, he's got a great, great set of hands and, uh, and he's a horseman. They work well together, the two. They work very well, father and son. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the way it has to be. Like, but just talking about there, we 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 just touched on the fact that you you source mares there for Willie Mullins, and like I, I presume there's a couple there's a couple of Geldens as well. Like, but um, how did the connection with you and Willie Mullins begin, or where did it really come from? Was it from Shane? Sorry, I missed that question there. Um, Hello? just I saw yeah yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Can now, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I just said there, just um, touching on the fact there that we were we were just talking about William Mullins there, and you you sourcing, I suppose, a few horses there for for a couple of his racing clubs there. Just um, like where did it all begin for you with um with Willie Mullins? Like where did the connection start, or was it from was it from Shane uh, pre-training for him? 
Um, I suppose it all started with Blue Blood Racing um, back in 2014, and uh, the lads were on about um, starting up a Garda racing club. And at the time, I was stationed as a guard in uh, Dungarvan in County Waterford. And uh, I was doing a bit of riding out at the time for John Kiley. And uh, John would be very good friends with Willie. And uh, we were riding out one day up in Mount Stewart in Dungarvan. And we had two young horses with us sort of looking at the mountains and away from everyone, away from life. We were just chatting away myself and John. And I just mentioned to us, I said, we're thinking of setting up a racing club in the guards. And I said, would you be interested in training? And uh, John said no, that he was under, he was under wind down, and uh, he said that he wouldn't be used to big crowds and dealing with big crowds, and he'd prefer not to. So he said, but he said, why don't you go to Willie? And I said, yeah, yeah. So that's where it all started with myself and Willie. And before I knew it, I was sitting down in the kitchen, having a cup of coffee with Patrick and Willie of the summer's evening um, after picking out the first mare uh, for Blue Blood Racing, Miss Me Now. And uh, she was, you know, it was nice to say that the first horse I least was shown to me by Willie. Um, she was actually missing a shoe the first day and he walked up and down the yard for me. And uh, sure, you could not but like her. She was presenting mayor free flow and Philly and I, you know, she plenty done as well, which was great to start up any club that there's not too much of a weight um, to have your first runner. So I took her and it, it developed from there with Blue Bloods and then there was lads and fruit, Blue Bloods that were friends with lads in County Mead and they wanted to know could they start up a racing club and I met them and uh, that, that derived Lions Mouth Racing and uh, we started the pre-training ourselves at home because a lot of the sourcing was being done and uh, when you want to get a horse into any of the clubs syndicates with me well I have to make sure that they're the right, they're the right thing. And once I'm happy with them physically and I'm happy with their their pedigrees and things like that, I bring them home to for my and the owner pays for the first three months of the pre-training. And uh, we make a decision based on that, that they're either good enough to continue, or we send them home then to the owners and tell them to breed off them, that we wouldn't be of the mind that, you know, that, that they'd be good enough. So it's been working that way ever since. Um have we got it right all the time? I wouldn't say we got it right all the time, but most of the time we do get it right. Yeah, it was sure look, but sure looking like that's it. Like especially with horses, like it's it's, it's very hard to get them right the whole time, uh, James, as you as you well know. Um, I suppose just touching on the fact there that you you it, it goes without saying like that you're a big fan of of mares, and I know there was an article there about you in the Irish Field. And it was all about really your fascination about say sourcing mares. Um, I suppose to the to the breeding industry, a uh, filly foal is is basically known as as to be a kiss of death. But definitely, like with your racing clubs, like you've you've put the nail to the sword basically there with that. Um, is there any particular reason like that you're particularly drawn to mares instead of say colts or geldens? Yeah. Um... Going back to what you said there, the first about the kiss of death, um, I think it's gone well from that now um, because yeah. of the programme that has been put on for the mayors. And uh, we can see at the sales, um, you see a, a Philly foal there in uh, Tattersalls this year making 80,000 uh, by Flemings for albeit good pedigree. And she was a lovely filly. Um, but 80,000 for a foal, no, really. Like that's, that's... Yeah, that's, that's serious money, all right. That's surreal money. Um, yeah. To, to, I suppose the best way to describe it is, um, you know, you can't if if you lease a gelding, you see, in in a racing club, um, there's no capital outlay. Um, you lease because if you buy a horse, um, for fifty or sixty thousand, well then you're married to that horse. Uh, yeah. You have to wait to get him fit. You have to wait to to race him. You could be waiting a year and a half. He could get an injury. He's out in the field. You have to. Pay pay for him um, and you put in a capital outlay and you're putting a lot of money into a basket say 50,000 whereas yeah. when you're leasing you don't have to put in that type of money for the simple reason you're leasing the horse obviously but there's no one going to lease a gelding to you for the simple no. reason there's no residual value 
So when you're finished racing a gelding, that's if they're retired, they're in the field and you're, you know, you're, you're feeding them till the day they die. Whereas with a mare, um, you're breeding. So going back to when we take the pre-trainers originally for the first three months, well, then if they're not good enough for us, we kind of advise them to go down on the breeding route and you know that's what it's about when they go to the sales one race mayor very well bred is better than having a mayor that's after running about six or seven races there and she does nothing well then the value of our offspring goes down as well like you know um i think a very good example of that would have been a mayor that um i leased off uh, frank murderwood there blixed um she was a three-part sister to hurricane fly and she's the only one of the siblings that went down um in the mayors and and she won and her her progeny are making 80 to 90 thousand at the sales um she won two races for us um like if she didn't win those two races what would her siblings be making i know there's the hurricane fly aspect of it, but like you, you know it's worth money to these people um we're delighted to have uh, mayors of that that pedigree and that value if we had to go and buy those mayors like, there's a lot of money going on out over the, the, the table that we couldn't afford and no racing club could afford. I've I've one mare in particular, she's a half sister to Bob Linger. You know, what would she cost? She's by Flemingsford. What would she cost? You go up to the sales and you see Foles making 80,000. What would a four year old just turned five, half sister to Bob Linger by Flemingsford be worth? Yeah, it's it's crazy. To, it's crazy to think about. It, all right, but um, just going back, I suppose to the fact. Look at it, it's hard to really know. Like with the string of mirrors that you're in charge of, basically, like you you said, they're obviously um three part sister there to Bob Ellinger. But the one that's really caught, I suppose, the eye of the nation anyway this year has been she wears it well. Um, just give a brief, I suppose outlook as to how you came about her and realistically like she is the the standout mayor of, of without without being disrespectful obviously like the to really take off say James Fenton's racing clubs. Ah look she is she's um how will I describe her? She's she she's a tiger dressed like a lamb. Be the best way to describe she wears it well. Um Kyle Linus is the man that I've leased her off. Of. He had six mares for me to look at one day, and I went up to look at her. Uh well, them. And uh, I looked at six of them. And she was one of two I took, and she was lame on the day. She just wasn't right, she was slightly, slightly off. And her near four. And uh, I looked at it, I examined it, and I was quite happy that it was just on the very outside of the hoof there, there was a small small bit of a drop that was an anger. And uh, I just freed it up a small bit and trotted her again, and uh, it improved her, so I said, send her on. So she came down to two of them together and uh, put her in pre-training, and when you're in pre-training, you're not going to, we, we don't take them out of a trot, like, you know, you know, just out of a trot, we do a lot of the slow, slow groundwork. And it's only in the last few weeks or the three months that when you get him to the stage, that you just leave him straight on a little small bit. But like, even at that, like, that's not work. Like, that's not work. But um, the other mayor that came with her, unfortunately, we just couldn't keep her right. And she went home. Uh, she wears it well, just kept on going. And, uh, I remember riding her out one day, I actually have it on the Google glasses and uh, I was kind of saying, here I am riding the Scirocco and well, I don't know what I was doing on her, but she just turning the bottom bin below when we were supposed to be pulling up and she was like a mare that it was, was hard to start and you know, there wasn't a hoof out of her. So Dave had done a lot of her work on the hill um, at home. We have a grass gallop up a hill at home and they're beyond that for about two to three weeks before they go to Willie's. And um, she just, she was really, really caught my eye all the time. And she was with another Flemingsford mare that um, got an injury afterwards, belonged to um, Owen Lachlan. He, he, another good man that breeds very good stock. And um, 
she went down into Willie's and her first piece of work, um, Patrick rang me after it and um, he said, I'm just after seeing the Chirac of Philly doing a piece of work. And I goes, yeah. And I said, is she as good as what I think she is? And he goes, yeah, she's good. I said, that's, that's good enough for me. So um, then COVID hit us and um, I, I, I think COVID was a great thing for horses really. To a certain degree, I know people are probably looking here and they're probably saying, Jesus, that was mad. Um, but there was a lot of young horses there, especially four year olds. They got six weeks grass there that they needed, and um, a lot of them filled up and they let down. And she wears it well, was definitely one of them. Um, she, she really blossomed after the six weeks. Um, six weeks to her, McNaughton, and she went on, she won her bumper, and she. When I made in her life, I thought it was a bit, I suppose I was a bit, I won't say I had an argument with Willie about it, but I questioned him, um, you know, should we be not sticking to bumpers, like, you know, get her black typed in a bumper, and because I think we'll have no problem getting her black typed in a bumper, and he was like, no, he said, no, I want her over hers. Okay, there it was. He's the trainer, that's what he's been paid for, and uh and she went and she won her, her maiden her under Paul above in Sligo, and uh, Paul rang me on the way home from Sligo and I said, well, I said, are you happy? And he goes, she would have went around again, he said. And uh, he said, she, was, she hardly blew. And uh, he said, she's unreal. She's unreal. So we kind of knew what we had going into, we kind of knew what we had going into Tipperary, the same as anyone in the country did, really. She was there in black and white, like, you know, for what she'd done, like, to come along and win her bumper in Galway and then go on to Sligo and, and, and kick, kick the last hurl out of the ground nearly and still finished on the bridle. She, we, it was obvious there was something there. And uh, I remember John Kiley ringing me the night before the race in Tipperary and uh, he said, we're going to war tomorrow. I said, I am. And I uh, said, are you coming? He said, no. He said, I'm not going to go at all. And at that time, there was uh, two owners allowed go per horse. I said, come on away, sure, come on away. And he goes, no, no, I won't, I won't. He said, but he said, I think I'm only wasting my time. He said, go on to, um, go on to Tipperary. And I goes, why? And he said, she know, Mary was going to bait me out of sight. He said. And I said, I hope you're right, like that, you know. Was, uh, look, she done what she done in Tipperary. My phone is hopping, coming down after the stand. And uh, I just looked, of course, just to make sure it wasn't anything to do with work or it wasn't serious or anything. And who was it? Only John Coyley. And uh, <laughs> before he even got into the catering, just to say, well done, you know, and just goes to show the measure of man that John Coyley is. Um, he's how I really started in the game. And, you know, I was after being involved in my first graded winner as um, you know as as with Clough Sutton and all the racing clubs and with Willie and uh, to have your first graded winner like that and to have a man that you just beat in a grade three ring you know, to congratulate you it meant a lot to me and so that's she wears it well yeah well she look at like that that just sums it up like she is she's a special breed James like realistically like she is she she's one in a million, I think. Anyway, like I, I don't think anyone will, will will ever, I suppose, be able to be a part of it. Like for the the cost of plus Sutton Racing Club per month, like <laughs> you you would absolutely love to be a part of her. Like, but um, I I suppose I may as well crack on and and get Dean on board as well. Hey, look, it's great. It's great for the people that are in the club. Yeah, it, it, like it's great for the people that are in the club to have a mayor uh, to come out and give them a stack like that. It's great and. You know, I kind of feel sorry then for the lads that are in the other clubs, you know, that had a bit of misfortune during the year. Like, we lost Zola, and, you know, I'd love if the lads in Blue Bloods had her, and, you know, because they lost Zola. But, like, you know, that that's the kind of game you're in. Like, you know, if there's no room in this club for the mayor, well, then it's first come, first served, and, you know, that's the way it is. And I, I think I'm after, well, like, I, I think I'm after getting a, a very, very good mare for Blue Bloods in the last month, and and uh, we can talk about her later on. But um, she's a half sister to Take Tea, uh, that one in Nace for um, for 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 Willie, and um, I bought her for a client who was happy to to lease her, and um, she's gone into Blue Blood Racing, and I think a bit of her now. Um, but it, you know that's another day's work. But like, then you know I have a full sister to Briar Hill, then in Lions Mount Racing, and I have a full sister to Savannah, and. Uh, um, 
you know, he's been all around in England and the lads in Lions Mouth have those two fillies and you, you, you couldn't buy those two fillies really. And um, it's just a bit of luck now, you know, a bit of luck. Yeah, definitely that. Dean, have you any questions there for James? Um, I think you touched on the, the first one I had done. It was just about the, the, the racing clubs there, the, the Col Sutton and, and uh, Blue Blood and, and Lion's Mouth. I have a, a friend of mine is actually a member of the Col Sutton Racing Club and like, this lad wouldn't really be big into horse racing to get on there with a couple of other friends. Like, and he is like, he's ecstatic. He's over the moon. Like, you know, for his first ever involvement in racing, like, and, and he's over the moon and he, he says about how much great crack it is in the, the WhatsApp group and, you know, everybody has good banter with one another and everything around the race, he says, everything, you know, he says, it's just alive that they ever race with excitement with everybody, like, and, and that's great to hear that, that there is them, these racing clubs are bringing so much joy to, to people. Yeah. They, uh, the, the one thing yeah, kind of well, uh, loved people it. enjoy them, but I suppose the one thing that um, any racing club should be is obviously transparent and there should be communication. And I had a lad text me tonight to know how she wears a wear list. Boom, I was able to text him back straight away. Everything is very open in, in to certain racing, and um, there's nothing, no stone left unturned either when it comes to the horses. And we do weekly, if not monthly, updates on the horses. And uh, we do a question and answer session as well. But on top of that, if anyone has any question, they can answer, ask anyone in the management. And what I found about Plus Sutton Racing, um, especially with the time of COVID, um, I found that there was members talking to other members on our WhatsApp group uh, one night for a question and answer session. And there was one girl, she was very sick and she had COVID. And, there was lads offering to bring her messages and do her shopping for her. And that to me is a club. Whatever about horse racing, I love the social aspect of it. I love meeting new people. I know, you know, you know learning different ways of people's living and all that kind of stuff. And it was fantastic to see that people that actually didn't actually even get to meet each other yet, but they were still willing to do this for someone just because they were part of the same club. And, um, that to me is what a, any kind of a club should be about. Yeah. And uh, have you any plans for the future to add more mares on? You know, I know you have six, is it there at the moment? Yeah, we actually have a small a bit more than six at the moment. Um, the way we work it, see, we have a mare there, we get a knockout and things. So we get our mares going in the background as well. So we're kind of utilising all the monies of the subs that are coming in for the club. Say like there's six mayors, a hundred members, it's 120 euros a month. That's twelve thousand euros, you know. So that's that amount of money coming in. So if we are, if we have six mayors, that's two thousand per mayor. If a mayor is not used up for two thousand, well, we've got two mayors that were coming in at a thousand apiece. Well, then we'll utilize that money, you know. So we'll make sure that they're racing all year round. Um, we have one, two mayors near ready to go. We have another mayor ready to go in. She'll go in at the week after Lipstown Racing Festival. So that'll be four inside in Willys. And then what you call it, we have another two then coming along that not too far away either as well. And we'd always be on the lookout for something that we call ready to go, that we'd have room for one. So we'd always keep that slot available that if something just came along, bang, in she go. And if she's not able to go bang and she go into that club, well, then we'll maybe I could have lines mouth or I could have um, blue blood racing. So it's a kind of a juggling act, um, but everything is um, itemized. Everything is there in black and white. So Paul Donnie is the manager. He's very, very good when it comes to the figures, the same as Brian Plunkett is in uh, blue blood racing and McCauley in lines mouth. So I'm in constant touch with them all the time. So that... If I do come across um, a nice mayor ready to go or anything, I'll have it in my head, right? She can go. She, there's room there. That's where she'll go. And then I'll be able to snap, bang, take um, off that owner, breed or trainer, whatever it is, without even consulting the boys because they keep me updated weekly. So uh, I'll ring him then. I goes, lads, I have a mayor for you. Bang, I'm after taking a fee. And the lads are delighted. And there's no such thing then as going, oh, can we afford it, lads? One second day, I know, and I'll check. And that, no, there's none of that then, you see. So we're all up, kept up to speed all the time. And that's how it works so well. 
Yeah, you should all on the one page. I'd actually sound, you know, for anybody that's watching this in the future, like, you know, that's looking to join any of James's clubs, like, that's a good insight there as to how they work. You know, like the Blue Blood one is for, like, the members of the Gary Sheikana, isn't it? Yeah, it's for the members of the Gary. And what we done was the interest in it was so good within certain families we had um, people that were related to guards, may they be husbands, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, um, you know, you know, they wanted to join a racing club and they wanted to get into Blue Blood Racing. So this year we opened it up to family members and it's massive then, you know, like there's, it, there's getting more of a kick out of it and just yeah. bringing families more together, I suppose, as well. And, and uh, we haven't had a day out uh, at a race meeting since we opened it up because of COVID and we had a couple of uh, mayors got knocked out as well. We, one mayor got killed and we had another two injuries. So that slowed us up and, and it'd be, it's amazing then you'd often hear fellas going, Jesus, is that blue blood racing going? still going as well? Like, you know, because there's these lads that goes into the betting office and they just look at the television. They just they don't know the amount of work to get a horse today or like, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're going there. Yeah, I think Blue Blood Racing in the next three months is going to be a very rich talk about because we have three mares now near ready to run. And uh, three years ago, we bought Fame and Glory Gilding and Louis Archdeacon is doing a job on him at the moment. And uh, he's doing the pre-training for him. And he was going to run him in a pint to pint, but unfortunately, with the way the pint to pints are gone, we're going to have to change the tech now, I think. Yeah. And uh, just the last for me, uh, James, the Dublin Racing or the Leopardstown, the Dublin Racing Festival next weekend, is there one or is there a horse in particular that you're really looking forward to? No. Has Cal Sutton or any of them got anything going? Yeah, Cal Sutton run Rabinia. Yeah, Rabinia goes to the Paddy Mullins. Um, I'm looking forward to her running. Um, we eased off for a small bit, freshened her up from her last run. Um, I just thought that she wasn't getting home. Um, the ground is not a, an issue for her. Um, she seems she's robbing the champ. She'll go on soft. She'll go in heavy. She'll go uh, on good ground, um, which she proved to us the last day on heavy ground anyway. Um, it's a big race. It's a big handicap. I think she's in on a nice weight at the moment. Um, she might gain a couple of pounds when it's jigged up. But um, she should do herself justice in that race. Maybe if she was came home in the first five or six, I'd be delighted. But there's a race for her, I think, in Limerick. Uh, the week after Cheltenham, it's a two mile six mares listed race known as the Shannon Spray in Limerick. And that's the race I think that she could win now. Providing, you know, she, she meets the two races together. But she could surprise us now in, in, um, in Leprechaun. And she'd be unsurprising because I think she's a bit underrated now and I think she's well treated. Yeah. Yeah, Jane? Yeah, I should look at like that's it. Um... I suppose, look at what, like, say down down the line, say five years down the line, let's just say, James, is there anything in particular that you'd like to have achieved, say, by then, or have you ever even, have you even thought about that far yet, or? Uh, Club-wise, I'd like to have a chat in the winner. Um, I suppose this year, I, I, I kind of feel a bit hard done by that I didn't have a runner. Um, my second time now in the last five years, I was hoping that court artist would have got there one year. She never got there, unfortunately. But look, that's what happens. Um, she wears a well, obviously, if she went to Cheltenham this year. Um, I genuinely think if she went into the mayor's novice, you know, hindsight is a great thing. So I'm not going to comment on how she would have done, but I, w- I wouldn't be saying bad things. Um, uh, five years. I have a lovely mayor that Willie used trained one time called Rio Treasure. Um, She's in fall to hers and uh, she's due to fall in the next month. And I'd be hoping that in five years um, that that hires and Colt or Philly <laughs> they have to win in a race. <laughs> um, no, look, look, all I want to do is go racing, uh, have winners. Uh, since I started out with Willie, I've had 28 winners. Um, it's a fair, fair strike rate. And uh, 
if in five years' time that I can turn around and say I've over 60 winners with William Williamson, yeah, that'll do me. That'll do me. Yeah, well, look, that's that's always a good that's always a good um, goal to have in the back of your head, anyway. But look at when when you're when you're setting up a syndicate, like all you do is dream of a winner, like but to have 28 winners and hope to have 60 say done five years time, like that's that's definitely saying something, and that's it's certainly it's certainly great to see that and you the have quality of the mirrors are getting better. Yeah, the, <laughs> the quality of the mirrors are getting better, Shane. Um, yeah. um like we started off like yeah, and that. Not no disrespect like to the mayors that we had, like you know. Um, but every year you're always trying to better yourself. You're always trying to better yourself. And and I'm 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 finding that the breeders are coming to us a lot more than us going to them. And uh, you know, there's a lot of work goes into into it. Like like I've a mayor booked off um Frank Motherway since she was a foal. Um, the mayor never feel blue. I've heard books since she was a yearling, and it turned out she was very good because of Bob Lincher. And uh, but look, if you don't book them early, um, you won't get them. You won't get them. And you know, I've I have a book over there on the other side of the desk there, and I've I've forty or fifty horses inside, and it's all mares, and um, they're all broken down into their years, their respective years, and. Uh, those people have to be kept in touch with and uh, and uh, visit them every year and see how they're coming along and you know it's it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's 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 a lot of people say oh Jesus I don't know how you do it I love it you know it's it's like it's like playing football manager and and PlayStation it's the same thing like you know I like it's it's I I I just I love horse racing and this is a great way for me to be involved in it with my background in, in horse racing. Yeah, I was sure. Look at like that's definitely it. Like, and I suppose look at from talking to you, like you obviously know now that I'm starting to get into the breeding industry, and hopefully yeah. someday we'll be able to breed our own winner at some stage. Yeah, I was sure, James. Look at going on to, I suppose one of my last questions anyway. Um, as as you probably know now from talking to me now at this stage, I, I've just started getting into the breeding industry myself. Um. Look at hopefully someday down the line we'll be able to breed breed our own winner. Hopefully, touch wood. Um, but just say for those who are looking to get into the breeding or the bloodstock industry, would you give any advice? Say for those that might want to start out and just give, I suppose, a bit of a helping hand, basically, for someone that's that's years in the industry and plenty of experience. Uh, yeah, in breeding, Shane, is it? Yeah. Well, breeding in or breeding, bloodstock, yeah. never. I suppose in breeding, um, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a great believer if you put in big, well, then you're going to get back big. Um, I'm also a great believer if you're always looking for the chance you want to try and make a quick one, you're going to lose. Um, that's my, my motto. And I always say to any of the clients I have that I buy for, um, you know, you have to be prepared to be putting it in to get it back. And um, there's a lot of people there that, you know, they'll buy something with something wrong with them and hopefully they can remedy this and uh, get it right to get a, a return back. And you're starting with your back against the wall from day one. And uh, I, I, I'm totally against that. Um, breeding is a hard game. Um, you know, a broodmare, you're married to. Them. You know, there's a lot of work, you know, between CEMs and samples and then you go and get them covered and scanning. And, you know, there's a lot of work goes into it behind the scenes and pulling them down to the stallion and pulling them home. And then 16 days, then you're all there to stay every day with your heart in your mouth, hoping that she, she, she has a heartbeat, like, you know, and uh, or, or scanning fall, and then you're waiting for your heartbeat. But um, if you're going to go down into the breeding line, you have to have a good dam. Um, it doesn't have to be a winner, but something with a good dam sire. And um, once you have a good dam sire, to me, you can go, it kind of broadens your horizons when it goes down to the world of stallions. And then, you know, it all depends on what you're looking for as well. Like, um, but a dam sire to me, I think horses are bred from the dam. And that's the way I go in relation to getting involved, may it be in racing. Um, if you're going to go out on your own, you're going to have to have a lot of money. Um, there's no, there's no saying any different. Um, uh, vets bills like alone are frightening. Um, then you know, 
I think the best way to go, and I'm not being biased because I'm involved in a lot of racing clubs or anything, but the best way for me to go, I think, is spread the cost and get involved in two or three different racing clubs if you want to get and spend the money. And, and like, there's people in Cross Sutton Racing, they're involved in, in seven or eight mares. There's people in, in, in um, Blue Blood Racing, they're involved in five, five, five horses. Um, there's people in Lines Mount Racing, and there's only 30 in Lines Mount Racing, 30 members in it, and they have two mares on the go. And they've had, the other two mares that they had are retired. They won five races between them over the space of three years, and they're absolutely gobsmacked as well. So I think if, if anyone is, you know, willing to get started off in the blood stock industry and dip their toe, so to speak, is spread the cost and get involved with people that you learn and you know from. And, and that... Um, I suppose they'd have a bit of experience because there's plenty of people out there that will take advantage of you in any walks of life, not just horse racing. And that's what I hate to hear if, if people have been conned and I don't like that. Yeah, I was looking. It's, not, it's a word I, I'm very, I, I'm very slow to you. Yeah, I was looking like that's it. Like it's all, it's in every walk of life basically. Like you, you can't, you can't basically breed without meeting a couple of a couple of funny sores, let's just say. But um, just before we go, is there one horse in particular, say, that mightn't have, ra- mightn't have raced yet, say, in the racing clubs, that, that's particularly catching your eye? Um, I have, I suppose, if I start with Lion's Mouth, um, would be Shantou Philly there related to Severano, and I'd like her. She's unnamed. Uh, Blue Blood Racing. Uh, as much as I want her to be good, I think she's going to be good, is Never Feel Blue. And she's the sister to Bob Belinger. And now they have the half sister to take tea as well. And they also have a beat hollow out of morning support. Cream. So those those mares, they're, they're three very good mares. Um, I would say the likes of Ballerina, a few of those lads would, would give their left hand to have a mayor, mayor, a, a group of mares like those three. Um, yeah. So certain racing, obviously, we have She Wears It Well in Robinia. Um, we have a nice filly come along in Field of Chiffon. And we have a lovely soldier of fortune filly coming in the willies as well in the next, next week or two and she's she's got four Cheltenham winners on the page in Fernie Hollow and um, City Island Marley Street Grand Valley Gurnings she's, she's doing a lot at home as well uh, nice chestnut silly unnamed but I had to pick one yeah yeah Munda hasn't ran yet um, it'll be a toss up between two blue blood mares in the half sister to take tea and never feel blue. Okay, well, look at like that's that's very good and very exciting say for the members there. But um, we're there's less to... people in blue blood racing than the racing for certain racing, you see. So then I'll have less people to deal with by telling them about a good horse and blue bloods than I wouldn't for certain. So. You see where I'm coming from. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you're looking, hopefully, anyway. But you're looking, if the bloodline's there, it's it's definitely well worth a chance. But um, I think that's basically it. Dean, have you anything else to cover? Um, no. Um, it's, we've covered most things. That, that's basically about the, the racing clubs and, and a bit of a background. So, no, I think everything's covered, Shane. Yeah, we should look at like we may as well finish it up there. So, so look at Thanks again for those who are tuning in. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to Dean Hegarty and, well, Ryan Sharkey is with us here today, but as you all can probably tell, uh, we have a very new uh, intro video as well that, that Ryan put together very professionally. And uh, as well as that, I want to say a big thank you to James Fenton for taking an hour out of his day and coming on here. Um, it's been greatly appreciated, James, and, and it was thoroughly enjoyable. Thanks very much, lads, and uh, yeah, it was enjoyable. And as the fella says, um, if there's anything I can do for you in relation to any questions that can be answered down the road, don't hes- hesitate to give us an old shout. There'll be no problem. And Thanks, I'd like yeah. to take the opportunity as well to thank everyone that's involved uh, 
uh, the horses, especially the breeders and things that have looked after myself and uh, all the people in the racing clubs as well. Um, and then Willie's uh, down through the, the last year. And uh, it's a difficult time with COVID and everything, but I think patience will, will win out in the end, hopefully. And uh, we'll all be back racing someday and we'll all meet up and, have, and get to meet each other face to face and have the crack. Yeah, we should look at it like that's that's definitely it. No no sort no stone left unturned anyway. But um look at thanks again. Please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing, and we'll see you all again next week.